Welcome back. Uh, this is the third part of the tutorial series on Introduction to Unity. Some of my more astute viewers may have noticed that last time I said I would get around to the asset packages that I skipped over in the first video and never quite got there, but that's what we'll be doing in this video. So, as I pointed out, when you go to make a new project, you can import a number of Unity's default packages here. And uh, I said we were going to skip over it, but you can also always go to Import Package under the Assets menu and import any of these packages after the fact. So we are going to import a character controller. So we only need the first person controller, so we're going to get rid of the third person controller, uh, the prototype character, which goes along with it and these three scripts which are also all part of the third person controller. So what we're left with is the character motor, the FPS input controller, the mouse look, and the first person controller prefab. So we hit import. And it creates a nice little standard assets folder inside our project folder here. Now this project folder view is actually just a view of exactly what is under your assets folder inside your project folder that Unity created for you. So here you can see that when we imported the standard assets, it actually created a folder on our hard drive with the prefab and the scripts. So this is where you would be putting this folder here where you'd be putting anything you want to import into Unity, uh, be it a mesh or texture. And it's also where any imported assets will end up. And this is just uh, Unity's view of it. If you want to change the name of anything, it's good to go do it through the project folder inside Unity because uh, that way it will update the meta information that Unity keeps on all your files. So you don't want to confuse Unity by saying moving a file uh, that you already had imported in here. It can get messy, let's say. So now we have this first person controller, and we're going to use that to replace our camera over here. Because this camera, not very interesting, just looks out on the world, can't move it around or anything. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to drag in this first person controller. Now those of you familiar with uh, first person shooters on the computer will be pretty familiar with the basic first person controller Unity has. It's got your standard mouse look, which just means that as you move the mouse around, the camera rotates. And it's got WASD for movement. You can also use the arrow keys for movement as well. And jump is spacebar. So now we can actually walk around in our little world. And we didn't have to do anything except to import a Unity package, which is pretty cool. And now we're actually going to do a, one more Unity package import, because we're going to give ourselves a skybox. So we're going to come in here, we're going to import the skyboxes. This time we're not going to uncheck anything, we're just going to import the whole set. That way we can go through and take a look at everything that's available before we decide what we want. So you can click the materials that come uh, in the skybox set, and you can see the different views here. I'm kind of partial to the eerie skybox. So we're going to come over here to edit, render settings, and under render settings you have a skybox material option here. Now you don't have to use one of theirs, you can make your own skybox. Uh, I'm going to select the Sky box, but if you want to create your own material, set it to the skybox shader and select the uh, six directional views that the skybox needs. Uh, I'm not going to go into the art of creating a skybox in this tutorial series because uh, it really, it really is quite a bit of an art. Uh, would take its own series, I think, to 
get into that. But uh, lots of freely available ones, and then you also have Unity's free. They have quite a few here. But uh, we are going to talk about materials for a quick second. Uh, to create a material, you can just come in here into the project view and go to create material. And we're going to give a material to our plane here. I'm going to call it the ground material. I have the skybox folder still selected, but I can simply drag this out if I want to. Actually, to keep things or organized, you can also create your own folders in here. So I'll create a folder called Materials. And I'll put the ground material in there. And right now it's a, got the default diffuse texture, which just means that you can have a texture on it, and you can have a color. Uh, we're not going to worry about importing textures just this moment, so we're just going to give the ground a bit of a brownish color. There are tons of other uh, shaders that you could use. Uh, bumped, specular, uh, transparent textures in case you have uh, alpha channel on your texture. Uh, but for the most part, all of these require specialized textures. And since we're not getting into importing texture for now, we're just going to go with the default diffuse and give it a color. Now, once you have a material set up, there are two things you can do. You can either just drag it onto the object, like so. And now you see that we have a nice ground floor. You can also come into the properties of the object and hit this button over here. So we're going to create another material for our box. We'll call this the box material. And we'll give it a bit of a reddish color. Actually, to differentiate from brown, let's give it a bit of a bluish color. As I said, you could just draw the, uh, excuse me, you could just drag this over top of the box, but uh, we are going to go in here instead and look at the other way of doing it, which is going to the mesh render component of the object. It has this materials drop down, and uh, under that are the elements. So you could have multiple materials on a single object, and they all kind of stack. But since we don't uh, have any specialized textures that would say have a uh, alpha channel or anything like that, we're just going to change this default element, and we're going to give it the box material we set up. And now we have a blue box. So if we hit play here, we can walk around and get a blue box. And you got that nice looking skybox out there. And the skybox would obviously look much better if we actually had a full terrain, or if we weren't able to see down into the nothingness. But uh, we will be getting into the terrain editor in a few more videos. Just a couple more things to go over first. But I believe that is just about all we have time for. Um, uh, we do have time for one more thing. We have gone through quite a bit of videos without ever saving our scene we got going here. I mean, it's not a very complicated scene. We could create it from scratch pretty simply. But it's, it's good to always always save. So I'm going to create a scenes folder in here. And then we can simply go to save scene or hit and control S. And uh, I had previously already saved this scene actually, so outside of the video, so it just automatically gave it the test name that I gave it earlier and dropped it into the scenes folder, but if you're saving it for the first time, you could it, it would pop up something like this. You could go inside scenes, give it a name down here, and hit save. And then your scene's right there. And you, like I said uh, in the other video, you can have any number of scenes, depending on how complicated your game's going to get. So putting them in their old folder is a good idea, so you can keep track of them all. And that's all we have time for.